Today I'm going to be doing this valve job on the 2011 KX250F. So if you're looking to do this at home, I'll be showing you guys how to do all that. So, so the tools I've got, and you're probably going to need some other ones, but for now I've got a torque wrench, feeler gauges, sockets, uh, a T-handle, you can use a ratchet, uh, a 14, small screwdriver, uh, flathead, got some vice grips, uh, got some shims, uh, 7.48, um, got a caliper to measure the shims, and then a manual. You don't have to have the manual, but I'm using it. So, so when doing valves on a four stroke, the first thing you're going to want to do is get your bike at top dead center, which is also known as CDC. Um, so you're going to want to uh, take off your two inspection covers here, which are right here and here. Um, and then you're going to want to line up your uh, flywheel and then your mark on your ignition cover right there. So after you have timed your motor with the two inspection covers, you're going to want to wait, uh, work your way up to the top. And you're going to see these two bolts right here, these two allens. You're going to want to take those out and then take your spark plug cap off as well so that you can remove your um, valve cover. So to remove the uh, two inspection covers, I just use a pretty big... Um, flat tip screwdriver but then uh, to remove the valve cover like I said before just remove those two allens they are a six size six allen wrench and then remove the spark plug cap and then that will allow your um, valve cover to come off but just be careful when removing it that you don't rip your gasket if you're cheap like me and you want to reuse it, I do not recommend reusing your gasket, but works for me. So now that you have your motor at TDC, you got your little mark in there, and then you have your mark on your threads. Um, you can be able to see your two dots down here, which will line up with your um, mating surface right here. But uh, my gasket's still on, so you can't really see that. There's a dot there and a dot there on your camshafts. And then that'll also let you know that you're in time down there on your crank and up here on your cams. Um, so what I have here in my hand are feeler gauges. And what these are, these are a tool to measure the clearance between your camshaft right here and between that little bucket right underneath it. Uh, see right there, that's your exhaust cam and this is your intake cam. Intake towards the back of the bike, exhaust towards the front of the bike. Um, so now it's at TDC. You're going to want to look in your manual right here, and it says exhaust. Uh, your clearance is 0.17 to 0.22 millimeters, and then your intake is 0.10 to 0.15 millimeters. So now that you know your valve clearances for your uh, two cams, you're going to want to find the right um, feeler gauge that fits in there so basically what you're going to want to do is so if it's 0.10 to 0.15 you're going to want to start with the smaller side 0.10 and find that on your feeler gauges basically stick that in between the uh, the bucket the shim bucket and then your cam lobe and see if it'll fit in and basically if it fits it's good and if it doesn't fit that means you're going to be too tight and you're going to want to go smaller on your shim size. Okay, so now that we checked for our lower end of the tolerance, you're going to want to check for the 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 limit of the tolerance. So if you're a 0.10 fit, you're going to want to test your limit. So that would be a 0.15 millimeter. So you're going to stick that in between the cam and the bucket just like you did before and see if that fits. So this one will not fit. So that means that the clearance that I have is perfect. Um, the 0.15 won't fit and the 0.10 will fit. So that's perfect. If the 0.15 did, did fit, then you're going to have to raise your shim size to um, make that clearance smaller. So, so now moving on to the exhaust side, you're going to want to also just do the same exact thing you did for the intakes you're going to just want to measure your clearances your limits and then your smaller limit um so 
you got your 0.22 right here, your 0.22 millimeter for your exhaust. Um, you're going to stick it in between the cam and the bucket. It won't go in. It won't go in. Now, I already tried my 0.17 and it fits perfect. So, my exhaust clearances are good and my intake clearances are good as well. So, say your clearances were out of spec. So, first thing you're going to want to do is do not loosen these top bolts right here until you have taken out your tensioner or released the tension on your cam chain. So, first thing you're going to want to do is remove this 14 millimeter bolt. And either you can take out these two 8 millimeter bolts next and take out your whole ta uh, chain tensioner. Or you can do, what you can do is, why I have the small flathead screwdriver and uh, vice grips over there for, is what you do is you stick that um, small screwdriver into the hole where this screw is. And you spin it clockwise. And then you'll feel uh, a spring start to wind up which will release the tension and then you'll want to put your vice grips on your uh, your screwdriver to hold the screwdriver in place which keeps the tension um, off. So once you've taken the tension off of your chain, next thing you're going to want to do is uh, you're going to want to take off all of these 8mm bolts. So you can take um, these ones off uh, all with the, you know, with the ratchet and attachment, but you're gonna have to take a small open end wrench and get these two just broken loose and then probably do them by hand. That's what I've done in the past because you can't really get something right in the line of right here. Um, so one of the easiest ways I've found to do this is to never even take this whole cam chain off of the cams. You're gonna wanna take one cam out at a time and then adjust or put your new shims in and then just move this back. So what I do is, <clears throat> once you take this cover off right here that holds the cams in, cam cover, um, you're gonna slide the bearing forward that's inside here, which will allow you to move this whole cam camshaft. And then you're just gonna rotate it towards the other one. And when you push that forward, it's gonna let you slide it in front of this one so that you can just move it over and then it'll allow you to have access to your buckets to replace your shims. Then all you gotta do is replace your shims, put the buckets back on and then just move this right over. Be sure to um, make sure that the, that the chain does not jump on these teeth right here or else you'll have to and retie. If you have to retie one of these, it's just a bigger headache. I don't know, seems like more time to me. And then <clears throat> same thing with this one, just uh, put this one back and then move the bearing over, slide this in front of this one kind of, um, making sure not to let the chain jump, and then replace your shims, and then put it back. And then what you're gonna wanna do from there is, <clears throat> so after you replaced all your shims, <clears throat> you put your correct ones that you needed in there, you're gonna wanna put them back, put your cams back, and then you're gonna wanna put your I tend to, I've, I find it's uh, easier to put your cam cover back on without the bolts in it and then put your bolts in after. So, so you have your cam cover back on and then you're going to want to put all your bolts in. And then if you look right here, there's a number beside each bolt and you tighten them in that sequence. And then you're going to want to use your torque wrench and torque them to spec, which it'll say in your manual. I like to just torque them to 12 Newton meters and call it a day um pretty sure there's that's uh, so now that you have your cam cover back on you're going to want to put your bolts back in and then if you look on your cam cover there's a number beside each bolt and that's going to be the torque sequence that you torque the bolts in so you're going to you're going to want to get all your bolts snug and then start torquing don't torque one at a time so now that they're all snug you're going to want to grab your torque wrench and set it to, I like to do 12 newton meters. The manual right here says camshaft cap bolts, 9.8 newton meters. I do 12 just for safety, I guess. I don't know, peace of mind. So if you find yourself uh, having to replace your shims and you have everything put back together right here, uh, you got all those torqued down. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is take out screwdriver, 
and put the tension back on there, put the bolt back in, or if you took the whole tensioner out, put the tensioner back in. Then what you're gonna to wanna to do is kick the motor over uh, around 20, 30 times. And then what I like to do is come back down here, put this back at your timing mark, put yourself back at top dead center and check your timing marks. If your timing marks are in, are in spec and they're good, then you can check your valve clearances. If not, then you're gonna to have to retime it and that's a whole different video. Um, uh, check your valve clearances if you're in time. If they're good, reassemble. Um, if not, then you have to redo that whole process again and then just keep trying until your valve clearances are good. Um, hope this video helped you guys. It's not much. Um, probably a million different ways to do it. Um, some people like to do it really OEM, but correct. Some people don't at all. They don't really care. It's kind of in between, I guess. Um, you could do it real sanitary, you know, be real anal about it. But um, this is how I do it. Quick little brief exp explanation, but um, uh, leave some comments down below. Any questions, any tips for me? Give me any tips, you know, what you do, any other um, shortcuts you find or any other things you think would be helpful for anyone else reading the comments or watching this video. Thanks.